All right, guys, so welcome to day eight of uh, the 12 dark beers of Christmas. And um, I want to try and keep this one a little bit brief, but I've got a feeling I might not do. Not just because of old habits, but also because of the, the beer in question. Because on Instagram, I'm going to be doing the, my golden pints list, which I'll probably be doing um, it on YouTube as well. And uh, maybe a few of the other guys will be uh, doing a live stream, so I'll pop onto that. But um, yeah, it's a Sunday evening. I've got an impromptu. Oh God, got an impromptu Monday off, so I thought, yeah, I'll have something a little bit special coming up to the fact that it's going to be Christmas week as of the next day of recording this. Anyway, so. We've got a wee diddly little glass there because we've got a big beer and uh, this was intended to be enjoyed with others um, at a bottle share and um, the Marlborough piss up from earlier this year to be more precise but because Harry had like fuck tons of beer anyway and everyone brought beer we didn't get around to it we didn't get around to a lot of the beers if we're being brutally honest. But I just saw it and I was like, do you know what? I'll just crack this open now. Plus the uh, the name of the beer itself is really fitting as to the situation that we uh, find ourselves in here in uh, the UK. So we're going over to Hoppin' Frog and we're having a look at a barrel-aged Boris the Destroyer. Double Imperial Stout aged in whiskey barrels 10.5 percent abv so uh barrel aged boris aged in bourbon whiskey barrels to add a wonderful complexity to our massive american double imperial stout this barrel aging uh imparts memorable buttery vanilla like and savory whiskey character making this one of our most complex beers we've ever brewed uh, another testament to our hard work and dedication in bringing our customers the very best. And I can't remember what year this is. I would have to have a look on my uh, untapped because it was in my uh, bottle share list. Uh, but the information uh, will be in the uh, description, of course. So yeah, a nice big bottle of Hoppin' Frog. Um, I've had a couple of beers. I think um, at the... Marlborough piss up previously um Harry had the was it like their birthday cake which literally tasted like birthday cake it was ridiculous and then earlier this year uh, when I met up with Craig and Adam in Manchester um unfortunately Adam had to leave to get the train and uh Craig kindly uh, bought us a bottle of um one of the barley wines from Hoppin Frog and uh, we shared that and that was in northern monk uh, and i picked this up from northern monk as well from the sort of like cellaring program so they've got quite a lot of imports uh, that they've been aging in the sort of like underneath the uh the bar in the sort of basement place what what you call it cellar and uh yeah some really good stuff and unfortunately they didn't have the uh, barley wine because i was going to take that to the marble piss up but uh, I saw that they had uh, a couple of variants. I think they had a couple of versions of Doris. And uh, they had this as well. So I thought this sounds really damn nice. So a nice big bomber. I do love this sort of like classic American sort of bottle. And uh, there is the crown. So. I think my festive drinking has well and truly kicked off now. Um, speaking of Adam. Earlier this evening. Got a little bit of a a hop drop basically more dark beers uh because we we'd split an order with a brewery and he dropped them off even though i missed his message and i wasn't able to uh, greet him at the door so he just uh left it in the bin cupboard as per so massive massive thank you so yeah the reason why i've got the diddy glass is because i want to take my time with this although i know being me i'll drink this really fast and I don't want to be slower on my words before I've even started my uh, Instagram stream. But anyway, I digress. 
Let's give this a pour. Whoa, already. Massive lug at first. But uh, yeah, beer in the glass then. I mean, you can, well, mind you, I've got the bottle down there, but God, the aroma just surrounding me of this beer is ridiculous. Come on now. But yeah, anyway, uh, the appearance, jet black, it's like ink, oil, whatever you want to call it. Just looks really nice and glossy. I think my uh, bedroom floor might be glossy, uh, depending on how well this tastes. And that's an image for you. Glaze my wooden flooring. Oh, wow, the aroma on this is just... The barrel character on this is beautiful. It's a, it's a big um, bourbon aroma. Was it a bourbon or was it just whiskey? Whiskey. You can tell I don't drink much whiskey or bourbon. It's big, but it's not overbearing. Like it's not like the biggest aroma that you get in there. Oh, just loads of chocolate cake. Even like um dark chocolate Terry's chocolate orange. There's like a slight chocolate orange element to this. But yeah, it's big, cakey. There's a wonderful, gentle, roasted character. Now it's breathing a bit more in the glass. It's mellowing out really nicely compared to that first initial whiff. I just saw the right amount of sweetness, chocolatiness and bourbon character and woodiness. <sighs> Smells good. Smells very good. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, folks. Mm. It's got a very gentle intake. I will say that. But then... As soon as it hits certain parts of your tongue, just the flavour erupts. There's an eruption in your mouth. Very immature, I do apologise. Unlike the nose, the whiskey character is a little bit more pronounced. In fact, that is a, that's a potent Imperial Stout. That is like old school, big Imperial Stout. A lot of Stouts of this nature, are, you know, they've had vanilla put in there. They've had this adjunct, that adjunct, this, that and t'other. But this is just like old school, big Imperial Stout and then aged and I think that's got a couple of years on it. I'm sure, I'm sure I read that this was the, the 2020 uh, release. I love this glass, but it is so impractical just to even get a sip. I should have used my London Craft Beer Festival glass. But yeah, warm, savoury character. The pit of my stomach, well... The, down to the pit of my stomach you are feeling it there's just sort of like no hiding um, there's no masking uh, with other flavours it's just you get what you're promised it's a big bold imperial stout and there's a big bold whiskey character coming through And it's almost like strange to have a an Imperial Stout taste like this in a weird way. 
you know, it's not big, thick or gloopy. Um, if Paul from PA Brew News would be here, he'd be saying it's thin. I've, I don't think I've ever had the uh, the base sort of beer, so I can't tell you if the sort of um, if the barrel and the aging process has maybe slightly. It's not watered down that I'm looking for because it's far from watered down. No way. But yeah, it's it's one of those increasingly rare occasions where you just want to take a sip at a time of this and it's not abrasive but because of the stouts that i've been used to it almost has like an abrasive element to it and i think that just adds to the beer itself tell me now it's going to be a slog uh, getting this bottle drank tonight don't think i'll be drinking anything else um after this and i'm gonna make it last as long as possible i've got like a bottle stop thing so i might actually just slice up some cheddar with some salami or chorizo and have myself a nice a nice sophisticated supper but um, yeah, it's definitely bottle share material. I share with a friend, a loved one, um, have it with a few friends. Although you know, we don't know what what we're going to be able to do over Christmas because of a uh, Boris the Destroyer. But um, oh yeah, I almost feel like. I'm wasting this beer by having it on a Sunday evening. But, you know, it's it's Christmas. That's the excuse that I'm going to use going forward. But it is a beer that I would have... <laughs> upon reflection, it would have been nice to have shared this with a, a couple of people. But um, I'm sharing it with you guys. And that's uh, that's just as important. And then I'll be sharing it with uh, whoever is stupid enough to watch me do a live stream on Instagram. It's weird because I'm quite active on Instagram. And here on YouTube, there are a few people outside of like the beer stuff and um, in the real life. Like people who work with family members who might catch the odd um beer review and they know that i do it but it's always weird you know when you're like doing a live stream and you see someone's name pop up and it's like someone who you know but don't really talk to that much in work and it's like oh shit what am i doing what am i doing but yeah because i'm actually a lot more sort of uh, even like um harry and and that would will tell you that i'm a lot more sort of like quiet than i am doing my own stuff on youtube even in live streams when i'm joining someone else's live stream um it's almost like i'm i'm creating a character if that makes sense are we getting down and deep into a the clueless drinker so many innuendos so when people are seeing me going on and on and on and on and on on uh on YouTube and on Instagram and then in real life I'm a man of very few words then uh, it is a bit but it's just one of those uh, anxieties of life I suppose you'd say but yeah this is uh, this is nice big and bold um, I'm really enjoying it but there's really not too much to say about it um, but in like a really good way because it's just a good old fashioned barrel aged imperial stout. No dicking around, just old school brewing. And the sort of stuff that I look for when I'm, um, you know, getting to uh, American beers and that sort of thing. It's all the stuff that I missed out on when I was starting this journey. Um, but now 
a lot of places are starting to get a lot more stuff from the states and then you've got places like northern monk in manchester who have the cellaring project where i'm not too sure if if it's like personal bottles from people involved in the brewery or like stuff from trades from when like american brews have come over to the uk or whether they've just bought them or traded them or something like that but um yeah definitely if you're in manchester ask for the uh the cellar uh menu because there's some proper interesting stuff in there i'm not sure if the refectory in leeds have their own or if it's just the bar in manchester it's but it's good it's very good and this beer is very very good as well i'm gonna enjoy the rest of this gonna be steaming as a rocket steaming as a fucking rocket my lead anyway so yeah if you've tried this or any other version of doris boris or norris i know there's not a beer called Norris, but there should be wasn't there a character from uh coronation street called norris Oh, I think the, the, the shape that he owned in the shop and he had the glasses and the bow tie. I can't remember. If someone like that owned a shop nearby, they'd be non-stuff straight away. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, mentioned nonsense in a beer review. So yeah, lovely, lovely stuff indeed. Um, the barley wine that we had was beautiful as well. Uh, this doesn't have that sort of like same indulgence as that did. This is a bit more. Oh. Get a tripod, Peter. You need a tripod. Um, but it's a good, I don't know, it's a big beer, big flavour, but simple as well. Big and simple, like me. Anyway, so yeah, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Additional information, including the vintage will be in the description. I'm scratching my stomach, don't worry. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll join us, or us, in my real ale craft beer. Uh, you'll join me tomorrow for day nine, and we're coming up to the final few days, my leads. And thanks to Adam, I've actually got beers that I can drink for this series. Anyway, there, there was genuinely a point where I thought, I've literally not got enough dark beers um, there's even like a bit of raggy homebrew as well, which might throw into the mix. Anyway, we'll see what we come up with. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. And uh, all the other beer reviews that have been going up. It's almost like a video dump at the moment. But yeah, I think uh, it's sensible to upload a video every two days. Um and even though I've said loads that I'll stop buying beer uh, just to review, I still do it. I still do it. And uh, so, uh, yeah, if I can make it stretch and then just enjoy beers, that's, that's what it's all about, really. Anyway, I'm waffling on now. Cheers for watching. You all take care. Stay safe. And it looks like I've been eating pasta sauce where my uh, cigarettes have stained my white moustache. It's not really a moustache. It's just pubic hair. Uh, let's just end the video. Cheers for watching. See you tomorrow.